What's up, YouTube? Yay.com clocking in, and I'm coming at y'all with a brand new video. I'm sorry, I can't really be too loud because there's probably people sleeping in these rooms, so I have to keep it down. But what's up, y'all? You're probably looking at me, you're probably like, nigga, where the hell are you? And if y'all saw the last video, y'all would probably know. Right now, I'm actually right in the middle of doing a 24 hour challenge at my old job. In the middle of me making that video, I just decided, why not make a quick reaction video? You know what I mean? There was this particular video that I had in mind, and my little sister got me into these not too long ago. They're called Horror Stories Animated. I'm not sure if y'all heard of it. Maybe I could put a picture up so y'all can know what the heck I'm talking about. But like, it's basically these people who went through these crazy traumatic experiences. They found a camera crew and the animators who basically just like tried to rebuild the whole experience so we can just watch it from our point of view. And I was watching it. I'm just like, bro, this is creepy as hell. Put some village steps on real quick there. But like, yeah, my sister recently got me into watching these videos and they're actually kind of interesting. But some of them are kind of like creepy. And you would think since it's animated that it would make it a whole lot easier to watch. But like, no, it's not. But yeah, let me get everything set up and I'm gonna get to uh, what we ready to uh, react to the video. <laughs> All right, after about 15 minutes, we finally got everything set up and now we're ready to react. I wanted to use my AirPods, but unfortunately, they're dead. So I'm gonna just have to let's just turn it down so y'all won't be able to hear it during the video, like when y'all watching it. So like, hopefully y'all enjoy. If you're new to this channel, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. It would really mean the world to me. Leave a comment if you like, and please, if you could, just go crazy on that like button, bro, please. All right, without further ado, let's get right into it. When I was 19 years old in 1985 on New Year's Eve, a bunch of my friends and I went to a rooftop bar of a hotel. Boys About a half hour before midnight, I ran down to my car because I had forgotten my camera. I figured I would have plenty of time to get back up there and find my friends. I grabbed my camera and I got into an elevator all by myself. About halfway up, the elevator started shaking and it stopped completely. I was trapped. I have always had a problem with confined spaces, so this was not an ideal situation for me. Ideal After a few minutes, everything went silent that was going on outside. Then out of nowhere, the elevator lights went out, mm -hmm. and I started to hear children laughing. But this was not the type of place where children would be. My heart started beating faster and faster and harder and harder. Then all of a sudden, I passed out. As I woke up, I noticed Bruh. that I could not move or talk. I thought to myself, not sleep paralysis again. <laughs> then the light started to flicker on and off. And then all of a sudden, I see a black figure to the left of me in the corner of the elevator, crouching down, smiling at me. Definitely. Sleep I tried to scream, but nothing would come out. I tried to move, but I couldn't. A guy came over the loudspeaker and told me there was an electrical short and that he would have me out soon. There's a camera in the elevator, so to the security guard, it looked like I was just laying there. I guess they figured I was drunk being that it's New Year's. Anyways, every attempt to scream or move, that figure would just start laughing at me and pointing. This whole time, the lights were flickering. Then all of a sudden, I can hear the huge crowds counting down for New Year's. 10. The dark figure is staring at me, and now with a menacing smile, with 10 fingers up, nine. He's still looking at me with nine fingers up and he's moving closer. Eight, he was still looking at me with eight fingers up and he's closer. Seven, the same thing. Six, the same thing. Five, the same thing. Four, he's drooling and he's much closer. Three, he's closer. Two, he was closer. Then the lights quit flickering and it was pitch black. Then all of a sudden, outside went silent again. I felt breathing in my right ear. And then out of nowhere, I hear one. I couldn't breathe. The lights started to flicker again. Then a figure was on my chest. And all of a sudden, it was gone. And I can talk and move again. Usually when I have sleep paralysis, something bad happens. Once I got out of the elevator an hour later, I found out that there was a brawl during the countdown on the rooftop bar that I was at, and four people were killed by some maniac who was waiting until the end of the countdown to start hacking up people with a machete. Ever since then, I have not had a sleep paralysis episode. It looked to me like that 
Black figure saved your life, nigga. During that whole thing when he's just like, four, three, two, one. Hell yeah, I would've been scared, but like after I saw all that, I would've been like, you the real MVP. But yeah, let's, let's get to the next one, bro. I'm pretty sure that was the end of it. Hopefully this I lived in a city in central Ohio that begins with a C and has a big college that I lived near. I attended a different college than the one I mentioned and made the 20 minute drive from the city to that college. I also worked nights as a pizza delivery man in the city and the surrounding suburbs. One night, I had an order in the town where my college is located, which is a smaller suburban city northwest of my home city. Now, this call occurred during what my coworkers and I refer to as the dead hour, which is just before the shop closed at 1 in the morning. I begrudgingly took the pizzas, got in the car, and plugged the address into the GPS. I noticed that the house was located off on a back road in what looked like a sparsely populated area. Not thinking much of this, I drove up Route 315 to I-270 East and exited. After passing through downtown, the cemetery, and the college, I drove through some sub-developments and then onto a smaller road where the house was located. The GPS notified me that I had arrived to my destination, but to my surprise, the house was boarded up. I noticed that there was a small shed in the back of the house that had a small window. There was a flickering light in the window. Mm -hmm. At this point, almost every red flag had gone off in my head, but I knew my hard-ass boss would be pissed if I whimped out on this delivery, so I proceeded towards the shed. As I got closer to the shed, I heard a rustling in the bushes next to the driveway. Then I heard a man whisper, Here they come, baby. 45, 45. At that point, a man jumped out of the bushes and two other men jumped out of the shed. They were carrying knives and were wearing these long robes and white masks. I made it back to the car just in time, but one of the assailants managed to slip my arm. As I escaped, I could see the assailant standing in the middle of the road looking pissed. I probably drove 90 miles per hour on the way back. When I got to the shop, everyone looked shocked. After explaining everything to them, we contacted the police and dispatched a few officers to the house. When they got there, the assailants were gone. They found some drug paraphernalia in the shed, and some ropes and some weird torture equipment. Well, uh... Okay. Next. I was on a road trip with my friend Tom throughout upstate New York. On our second night of driving, we were taking some peaceful back road through the woods because we were tired of the noisy highway. So as we were driving down this narrow, dilapidated road, Tom suddenly really needed to use the bathroom. I asked him if he could hold it, but he said that if he held it any longer, his bladder would explode. So I just sighed and tried to find like a gas station or something. There was nothing to be seen though. So I was thinking about pulling over and letting him piss in the woods, but finally I saw lights cutting through the darkness up ahead. It was a 7-Eleven, thank God. Before I'd even parked the car, Tom flew out the door and raced inside. I realized while waiting in the dark car I was actually hungry, so I pulled out some change from my pocket. It would at least be enough for a bag of crappy Cheetos or something. So then I went inside. As I was walking through the store examining everything on the shelves, I felt a tingly feeling on my neck, like I was being watched. I turned around and saw a bearded man in a yellow suit casually slip into the other aisle. I rolled my eyes, picked up a bag of Cheez-Its, purchased them, and walked out back to my car, looking at the dark woods behind the 7-Eleven. Tom had been gone forever, so I texted him and he told me he was just finishing taking a huge shit, which was classic Tom. Classic Tom. I was just crunching on my Cheez-Its when I heard somebody go, Psst. 
I quickly looked around but saw nobody. Over here. Finally I spotted a man peeking his head around a tree in the dark woods. His face was all dirty and he had glassy eyes. We stood staring at each other for what seemed like the longest time until he said, Hell no. I got in my car and locked the doors, texting Tom to hurry the fuck up. I told him there was a creepy weirdo outside the car and he was all like, alright, be right over. Later on, he walked out the doors and climbed into the car, and I hit the gas to get as far away from that fucking place as possible. Because it's so casual. As we were driving, I looked back one last time in the rearview mirror and saw three cloaked bulky men standing in the trees surrounding the 7-Eleven. Needless to say, I still have no idea what the hell was going on at that place, nor do I ever want to find out. All right, that's weird, but like, it's just like, who cares? Creepy ass, go ahead, try to do some weird shit. It's not like y'all was around a familiar area. Then now it's when you just be like, you gotta be like, Ugh. these ones that I'm watching actually aren't really that scary. The first one was pretty bad, but like this one isn't, yeah. But yeah, but let's keep going. My name is Yusuf. I'm 21 years old. Okay. A few weeks ago, my parents decided to go to Lebanon for a few days while I stayed home. I was happy to have a few days to myself. So I decided to drive to the lake which my family went camping at when I was small. It was remote, surrounded by trees and barely anyone was there. I decided to stay for one night though. As I got there, I decided to dare myself into skinny dipping since I was alone. To be honest, it was quite refreshing and relaxing. As it was getting dark, I took out some firewood to dry up with a campfire and got my lunch. That night, I dared myself into sleeping naked under my towel as I would never get another chance like this. As I woke up, I was shocked. My towel was gone. I couldn't find my clothes either. I felt scared as this meant I wasn't alone in the woods. To my luck, my car keys weren't stolen so I decided to get home. However, since I was staying for one night, I didn't bring any extra clothes. Due to my condition, I had to drive on those barely used roads to avoid any exposure to the public. It was a bumpy ride, but it was worth it. After a few hours, I saw a man in the distance near the road. He tripped and hit his head on a rock. Despite my condition, I knew I needed to stop and give him some help. But as I saw him, I realized he was wearing the same clothes I wore yesterday. I got out to ask if he's okay, but he didn't move. As I got closer, he grabbed my hand and looked at me. He had wide eyes and a huge terrifying smile. I was more scared than I liked to admit. I quickly got in my car and drove away. I managed to get home by sunset and it took me a few minutes to get the balls to run to my front door. I have no return to the lake. And his smile haunted me ever since. Okay, listen to me. Everybody out there, if you driving on like a real sketchy ass road and you see somebody hurt themselves, nigga, that's just too damn bad. Please don't do what he just did. Especially since he was all, he was all exposed. He still won't get out and be like, hey, yo, bro, you all right? I'm good on all that. <laughs> I'm good on all that. Okay, bro. I've never been the religious type. So when me and my parents went to visit my Uncle Ben, who was a Baptist preacher down south, I wasn't too thrilled about it. He had always been one of those people that warned everyone about what would happen to them if they didn't devote their life to the church. And to be honest, I thought it was a load of crap. He always warned me that the devil was on the prowl. He had these crazy assumptions that they were demons in human form amongst us, here to recruit us for Satan's army. 
I of course shrugged it off as just another one of his crazy stories that he conjured up in his overly paranoid and highly delusional mind. When we had arrived at his house, there he was standing there to greet us with his Bible clutched in his fist tightly. As I walked past him, I politely spoke to him, but the only words that escaped his lips were, are you ready to protect yourself from the devil now? As usual, I told him no, that I didn't believe in such nonsense. He then turned to me with the most creepy look on his face and said, I tried to warn you, but you're on your own now. Good luck, you're gonna need it. Later on that night, during a powerful thunderstorm, as I was sleeping in the guest room, which always seemed to creep me out due to the fact that there was always a large creepy cross of Jesus hanging above the bed where I slept. I had finally drifted off to sleep, but was awakened by a warm drip of liquid on my forehead. I thought it was just the roof leaking, since it was raining so heavily. But when I opened my eyes and wiped my forehead, it was not rain. It appeared to be blood, which of course startled me. When the lightning flickered upon the cross, I had noticed that the nails in the hands of the Jesus figure was dripping blood. Then I heard a rustle under the bed. When I looked under it, there was these yellow eyes glowing in the darkness. Then the face of whatever it was slowly revealed itself. It had horns and teeth that were sharp and jagged. It was the devil. I screamed and ran for the door, but was halted as it grabbed me by my ankle and pulled me under the bed as I screamed for my parents to help me. When they ran into the room and turned on the lights, it had vanished quickly into thin air. I then ran into the arms of my parents breathlessly as my sobbing echoed throughout the room. The next day, in the car, on the ride home, my parents tried to convince me it was just a nightmare, but the red handprint on my ankle proved otherwise. All right, I'm not gonna lie. That last one kind of got me. The thing about all the stories that they be having on these is that like the things that be happening in them, the details are so particular that you would think that nobody would make that up. Maybe that's what they want you to think. And the thing about this is my little sister literally told me that she kind of be falling asleep to these. And today I would like to politely ask, how the hell can she do that? Right, I'm literally just sitting here in this empty hallway and I'm thinking that it's my creeper. But yeah, yo, let's not, yeah, just don't do whatever they did in that video, bro. If you driving on a real messed up road and you see some guy coming from behind a tree, he'd be like, come in. Don't go to him. If your church pastor tells you that you better pray for these demons, you better just do it just in case, bro. Because I have yet to see a demon, but like, listen, bro, I'm definitely gonna be prayed up just in case that time comes. And that's a fact. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I appreciate everybody for making it this far into the video. If you did make it this far into the video, please make sure you smack that like button in the face because that nigga is a hoe. If you're new to this channel, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. Trust me when I say you will not regret it. Leave a comment if you like and always make sure you hit that thumbs up button. With that being said, my name is Jay.com and I'm going to catch y'all in the next video, all right?